Our, uh, it's a pleasure for me also to introduce our next speaker, Professor Liliane de Almeida Maia. She's a full professor in the University of Brasilia, uh, UNB, and has 15 former master students and seven for former PhD students. So Professor Liliani has published more than 50 research articles on international journal journals in the field of nonlinear elliptic equation. Uh, today, uh, Liliani will talk about a dynamic system approach for problems involving Pucci external operators. Thank you, Liliani. Please go ahead. I'd like to thank uh, the kind invitation of Professor uh, Juan Nimaco and uh, Fagner Araruna and all the organizing committee for uh, having me here this afternoon. It's a pleasure for me to be in this uh, very interesting workshop. And uh, I'm going to talk about a topic that I've been involved in the past two years, which I'm very fond of and I hope you like. And uh, in this uh, Friday afternoon, those who are with me this afternoon. Um, this is a joint work with uh, Gabriele Nornberg and Filomena Pacella from La Sapienza. Uh, it's published in, in communications and PDEs. And it's about, uh, I'm going to start from the very beginning, the very uh, simple um, kind of equations that we approach. This lane M then equation minus Laplacian of U is U to the P basically if you are thinking about positive solutions. So everything is going to be around this P, how it affects the solutions and uh, the problem. The problem we want to, I want to talk about is a uh, fully nonlinear, but has this linear uh, min uh, minus Laplacian as an example. If you're thinking on uh, radio solutions, you go to the uh, an ODE problem and you have the spectrum of two, D2 of U of R equal to U2 prime of R as one eigenvalue and N minus one U prime R over R eigenvalues. We are going to talk about radio solutions and when you try to find a radio solution of a problem like this, you end up in this uh, nonlinear ODE with these initial conditions, U prime of U equals to zero if you want a regular solution at zero. And U of zero, the height equals to some constant gamma. So this is going to be the model of what we try to, to tackle. The an extension of this is what we call the non lane m equation, which is uh, Laplacian of U. And then you have a weight like modulus of x to the a, which multiplies the power p of U. This changes a little bit. If you are looking for radio solutions, you end up with this uh, ODE, nonlinear ODE, uh, which is written there with a weight r to the a. And if you perform calculations here, you end up with, um, there is an R to the A missing in the equation below, but you end up with the, this uh, uh, linear term U2 prime, N hat of uh, minus one R U prime. And this N hat is what we call the effective dimension. So it's not a n minus one anymore. It's a number, which is just a real number, as you can see in this example with a. And this is going to be the effective dimension of this ODE when you do the calculations with the weight. Why study this kind of equations? Okay, and some of the motivations we have are from astrophysics, stability of stellar structures, or general relativity, study of black holes 
in spherical symmetric uh, singular solutions of Einstein's equation. For example, I don't know much, but what I know a little bit comes from uh, this kind of problem. And also the anon, the problem with the weight x to the power a comes from the first studied or modeled by Anon in 73, studying uh, numerical stability of uh, steady states of stellar systems. So these concentric shell models uh, apply the correction and uh, gives a, a generalization of the Lane-Emden equation um, studied numerically. So it was proposed by Anon and has been studied since then. And now we get to the more general equation which I am going to talk about. It's what we call the Pucci and Online MDEM equation. Why? Because it has this nonlinear uh, non -linear term u to the p, but also an operator which is fully nonlinear. This Pucci operator represented by m plus minus lambda lambda, small big lambda in this equation. What does it mean? These Pucci's extremal operators are generalizations of the um, Laplace operator, and it's fully nonlinear. It's basically given by these some expressions on positive eigenvalues, negative eigenvalues, multiplied by these lambda lambda constants, and they appear in different settings in uh, field theory and uh, main field games, what they call. And uh, that's why uh, they come up and we are interested in. Here, I'm going to talk about some um, approaches we have done for a domain, which can be RN and also a ball or exterior of a ball. Why? Because the Pucci operator is very, is fully nonlinear, difficult to, to uh, tackle directly. But what we do is we look for radio solutions. And then this gives us a simpler problem, more tractable. And that's how we, we get to exploit a little bit more on uh, the kind of solutions it has. Pucci's operator appear in, for example, in... Um, regularity theory for fully nonlinear elliptic equations. This is explained very well in Caffarelli Capri's uh, book, 95. Stochastic control, this is Saint Leon's 82. And in fact, you can see basically as a generalization of the Laplace operator, if you take lambda small equal to lambda large, you end up with the lambda trace of D2 of U, which is lambda Laplacian of U. So this would be just a multiple of uh, Laplace uh, operator. So going to the radio setting, the operator becomes simpler and it's the way we, we face it. When you try to find uh, uh, radio solutions, you end up with this red equation given in u2 prime, u prime, and then the nonlinear term u to the p. And this m function, m plus, is uh, a Lipschitz uh, line function, uh, straight line functions with uh, slope lambda small, lambda large. So it's going to be a Lipschitz, uh, uh, let's say an equation is stated in, in two different, uh, uh, phrases, statements. So you end up with um, u2 prime given, if you take to the left, the, the other, the operator m, you can also write the same equation uh, with Pucci plus operator as u2 prime equals to m plus, which is this uh, Lipschitz function, m plus s, function applied to the term u prime and u to the p. So depending on where, if you have s lambda with s less or equal to zero or bigger than zero, we have an expression 
for the M plus uh, term. But anyway, it's a lot more tractable than the completely fully Pucci's operator. That's why. Okay, in the radio setting, um, we can work with the uh, radio domains, the ball, the annulus, RN, and the exterior of a ball. And it's not difficult to see that for the positive solutions, you have um, solutions decaying with VR variable. So U prime R is less than zero. It's a decaying function, profile function in the ball in RN. And because of this, the M function, M plus, M minus, that defines the Pucci operator is going to depend basically on the sign of U2 prime of U. So if U2 prime of U is less than zero, you have the Pucci plus operator given by this expression that you see on the right. And if you have U2 prime positive, you have this other expression. Basically, you see that there is a small lambda multiplying by U2 prime and big lambda multiplying U2 prime. And you are going to have like two different Laplacians in different regions, depending on the concavity of the solution. This Dimension-like numbers appear when you perform the calculations on this ODE, and they are very important in uh, establishing ranges for existence of solutions. For example, if you uh, see the work of Coutre Leone, we're going to see how these dimension-like numbers appear, and also in the works of Kwas Sirakov for existence of solutions, not just radio, solutions with no symmetries for the Pucci operators. So when you do calculations, these dimension-like numbers come up into the equation and they are going to rule a lot with respect to existence of solutions for this problem. Okay, in order to study in these very general domains, RN, exterior of a ball, you have different types of solutions that you can find. So we have, for example, fast decaying solutions, which are the solutions, radio solutions, which decay with order R to the N tilde minus two. You have slow decaying solutions, which are solutions which decay with R to the alpha, where alpha is two plus A divided by P minus one. See that it depends on A and on P. And you have what was called pseudo slow decaying solutions, which are solutions that are going to decay oscillating in between two um, potential R to the alpha decaying, let's say, range. So you have these three possibilities of solutions which decay when R goes to plus infinity. This uh, pseudo slow decaying appear basically because you have lambda, small lambda, uh, different from big lambda. When they are equal and you have the Laplacian, you don't see the pseudo slow indicate. But let's see in our approach how to find them. A very classical result now, uh, approaching the Pucci operator for radio solutions in the radio setting, is this work by Felmer and Quas, where they were able to uh, decide from the ranges of P what kind of um, solutions, non-trivial positive solutions we are going to, to get. If P is between one and some uh, P star, which was called P star, there is no non-trivial radio solution in Rn. We are going to find solutions in the ball, but there is no solutions in Rn. If P is equal to P star, which is like a critical uh, power, you have a unique fast decaying radio solution. And if P is larger than P star, there is a unique radio positive solution, which can slow decay slowly, like R to the power minus alpha, or pseudo slow decaying, which is the one that decays oscillating 
between two copies of R to the minus alpha. We're going to see pictures then, I hope, to make it clear. Okay, so I uh, draw a picture here, not so good as uh, Eduardo's art, artwork, but hopefully it's going to help to see the profile of these solutions. So in the first case, when you don't have solutions in RM, we have solutions in the ball. And the profile, since it's a radius of positive solution, is the green profile. Then as you get to P star, this critical power, you find a fast decaying solution, which decays as R to the power minus N tilde minus two. Then you have a range where we, we have pseudo slow decaying solutions and then slow decaying solutions in Rn. So from P star on, you have solutions in Rn and below you have solutions in the ball. That's a, a summary of the result by Thelmer and Quas. What did we do? We decided to approach the same problem or uh, a slightly more difficult problem with this weight, R to the A, using a dynamical system, um, uh, let's say correspondence to the, the, the initial problem. So what do we do? We define two variables, x to the t, which is given by minus r u prime over u, and z to the t, which, which is minus r to the one plus a, u to the p, u over u prime. And t is going to be the logarithm of r. So we convert the radius into a time t, and we use these two functions of u, u prime as, new, as new variables. Okay, defining these two variables, x and z, we arrive at a dynamical system uh, of uh, ODEs, let's say, in terms of x and z. And what does it uh, mean to us? All the, the study of the flow for, from this system is going to have a correspondence one-to-one -to, -one to solutions of the Pucci radial problem. So finding trajectories or orbits in this uh, dynamical system is finding solutions in, for the Pucci radial problem. So what are the advantages of uh, transforming the problem like that? All relevant sets which determine the behavior of the orbit are just lines. So we simplify a lot the separation of domains uh, of times, let's say, using this kind of, uh, of variables X and Z. It's easy to study the monotonicity of orbits with respect to P, which appears only in the second equation. And this changes a lot, simplifies a lot the approach of Thelmer and Quas, because at some point they had to use a sophisticated argument of uh, Coleman in order to uh, see some monotonicity of the problem with respect to P. And here, no, it gets a lot easier to see how the problem varies with the variable, with the power P. The lines that I talked about, which define everything, which makes things a lot easier to see are X prime equals to zero. Sorry for the noise. There is some noise close to my house. L1 plus, Z prime equals to zero, L2 plus is just a line. And most importantly, the change of concavity is given also by a line. So when the tra trajectory crosses this line, we're going to see a change of concavity in the profile of the solution. So it's very easy to see everything because the referential is going to be like different lines in this, um, dynamical systems. What are the stationary points? I'm going to simplify here, um, taking A equals to zero, the stationary points of these dynamical systems are the crossing of X prime is equals to zero and Z prime equals to zero. And then you, we end up with these three points, zero lambda N, A zero is N tilde plus minus two zero, 
EM0 is this number. I'm sorry for the noise. N0, you study the dynamical systems, system linearized around N0, and then we find N0 is a settle point for P bigger than one. A0 is a settle point for P bigger than N tilde over N tilde minus two. And M0 is a sink or a source according to where you find P. Basically, this is the picture of the dynamical systems. You have the variable X in the horizontal line. You have the variable Z in the vertical line. You have the change of concavity given by this line, uh, red, pale red. L plus, and then you have the regions when the trajectory crosses from region R lambda plus to R lambda minus, there is a change of concavity in the profile of the solution. And the flow is very easy to see with respect to these straight lines. The blue line is Z prime equals to zero and the green line is X prime equals to zero. So basically, these are going to be important lines where the, there are big changes in the flow and basically big changes in the existence of solutions. For example, if you take the flow for X positive and Z positive, which is the first qu quadrant is where you will find solutions U positive, and P is less than PS over A. PS over A was defined previously, it doesn't matter much, but it's a real number with respect to A. What do we find there? We find that we're not going to have solutions in the whole RN, just following the flux, for following the, the flow uh, on the plane XZ. So as you compare the flow and the orbits with the positive solutions, you see only solutions in the ball. You don't see solutions in Rn for P less than or equal to PSA. This is a very important theorem, which was proved very differently because it was proved for radio and non-radio solutions. But in the case of radio solutions, using our dynamical systems, it's very easy to identify and uh, state the theorem. The theorem is about super solutions, super solutions um, for the Pucci operator. It's due to Kutri Leone 2000. And it says that if P is less than or equal P S A, which is a number that I'm not going, but it depends on A here. Then the Pucci operator M plus minus D2 of U plus the problem with the weight X to the A less than or equal to zero and U positive in Rn, then U is identically zero. So you don't have a super solutions and therefore you don't have a solution for Rn, the whole Rn for a problem. If, if the power of U is P very small or below PS. Basically, we see this from our dynamical systems approach. Why? Because the flow is, is what you see in the picture on the left. The flow for this situation is something exiting A0. It exits A0 and it flows outside the box and outside this a priori estimates that we have, we are able to show outside the box, all the solutions blow up in finite time. But when a solution blows up in finite type, for example, in the variable X, this means that because X is defined with UR in the denominator, it means that UR is zero. So the flow is, we prove that the flow is just like what you see. A regular solution is the one that is coming from N0, which is one of the stationary points, and is red, represented here red. But this red orbit is exploding, let's say, 
bx variable is going to plus infinity in finite time. So what you see is a solution in the ball like this profile in red. So the, the, the orbit that you see, the, the trajectory that you see gamma p is just the red solution in the ball. The, this is the profile of the solution because it's a radial solution. The flow, the orbits in the flow, which are green, are solutions which blow up forward in time and backward in time, which means that u is zero in some time t0 and is zero in some time t1. Therefore, you have a profile or a solution in the analysis, as you see in the green profile. And finally, the solutions which in backward in time, they go to a zero and forward in time, they blow up in finite time. So it's a singular solution as you see in gray. These are the three solutions that we find in correspondence to the flow of the dynamical systems. So the novelty in our approach, of course, Felmer and Quas have identified already the solutions in green and red are to get very easily these type of solutions and also to get the singular solutions at zero as you see in the gray profile. Okay, if you go above the PS, uh, let's say limit in P, what do we find in our approach using the dynamical systems? We find a picture like this, as you see on the left, which means that there is a solution exiting M0 because M0 is a source in this case. This is all proved, of course, I'm just giving pictures in order to make, make the results easier to read, but M0 is proved to be a source Therefore, from minus infinity to plus infinity, orbits are coming out from M M0 and one of them is arriving at A0. This is called a singular fast decaying solution. It's the blue one or the violet one that you see in the picture. Then you have gray solutions, which are those that exit. There is just one that exits and arrives at A0, which is the fast decaying solution singular solution. Then there are the gray solutions which exit from A0 and go out of a box in, with respect to X and Z. This means that it blows up in finite time, which means that U is zero in a finite radius. So this is a solution which is singular at zero and um, has a, a zero level in a finite radius, as you see in the gray picture. And then we have, in this case, the solutions in the ball, which come out of N0, the regular solutions, and the flow is unbounded, which means that it's a solution that for a finite time, U is zero. So it gives the profile in the ball, is the red profile. And we also identify the solutions in the analysis. So all of these solutions were possible to identify from the dynamical systems. In the paper of Elmer and Quas, they identified the solution which is red, but just reading the dynamical systems, you can system, you can identify the other ones. Let's see, this is called the, the, the P's which are in the ball. Finally, we, arrive as you go up in this parameter P in the real line, positive line, we arrive at what we call P star. P star is the one that in our dynamical systems, you see an orbit that connects N0 to A0, which are two stationary points. So at minus infinity time, you are in N0, and at plus infinity time, you are in A0. So this is a solution which you read in red, which has a profile with, with some height and decay into plus infinity in the whole Rn with a decay of order minus n tilde minus two. Then as usual in the flow, you have the trajectories in green 
We show that they exist, how they behave, they are not bounded. Therefore, they end up representing solutions in the analysts um, for the Pucci operator, radio solutions. Then we have solutions which are periodic and going to some, um, uh, let's say, periodic orbits. And because it's, it's not the Laplacian, the profile you see is a singular profile like the yellow one. And the solutions which has the M0 in this case is still a surge. Uh, no, a source, a source. So the, there are trajectories coming out of M0, which says that as R goes to zero, they are singular and going into uh, a periodic profile. So they behave pretty much like the, the gray profile that you see here. Okay, but let's see, all this is stated in one theorem. That's the idea in pictures that I gave. Existence and uniqueness of uh, fast decay solutions for Pucci's operator. So our result is there is a unique P star such that the gamma star P, which is the trajectory, regular trajectory at this P star arrives at A0. So it's a fast decaying solution. Moreover, for P less than P star, these uh, trajectories blows up, uh, any trajectory gamma P blows up in forward time. But this means that it's a solution in the ball for the Pucci operator, radio solution in the ball. And for P bigger than P star, this gamma P, P trajectory arrives at M0 odd or at per a periodic orbit around M0. So this is going to give uh, a, a, a slow decay if it arrives in A0, and it's going to be a pseudo slow decay solution if it goes around a periodic orbit. Bon. Moreover, we have existence and uniqueness of uh, the trajectory at P star, which is the critical exponent, connecting N0 to A0. So let's see. I'm almost done. A sketch of the proof for this existence uh, of uh, this very important orbit, which is fast decaying at the critical exponent. So first we prove that the solutions in this range C are, uh, the P's in this range C form an open set, the C is an open set and bounded from above. So we define P star as the supremum of the P's which, for which the orbit blows up in finite time, which means the supremum of the P's for C. This is going to give the fast decaying regular solution. There is the supremum, it's attained, and then it gives the fast decaying regular solution. Moreover, the, the interesting result is also that it's unique. You have only one fast decaying solution for the Pucci operator in this setting. How do we prove that it's unique? Suppose you have two, then two p's, let's see, two powers that gave this regular solution uh, starting at N0, arriving at A0, which correspond to fast decaying radio solutions. Since P1, so without loss of generality, take P1 less than P2. In this case, we, we, it's easy, the calculations are easy to see that the orbit exiting from N0 has the orbit gamma P1 above the orbit gamma P2. So they, they exit with P1 over the gamma P1 over gamma P2. And then um, when they arrive at N0, at A0, the gamma P1 is below gamma P2. So they have to be two orbits, you're going to see the picture, are exiting N0 this way, arriving at A0 this way. 
So if gamma P1 and gamma P2 are two fast decaying and they intersect, they must intersect because they cross and arrive in different uh, order, let's say. They intersect at some point Q, these two orbits. But at this point Q, the X is the same. The X does not depend on P. So the X prime is the same. And the Z prime is ordered, like Z prime P2 is less than Z prime P1. But then, since the flow is always tangent to the X, prime, X dot, Z dot, you see that this cannot happen because there is an order of um, gamma P1, gamma P2, that the, the, you cannot have the Z dot P1 over Z dot P2. This is an absurd, let's see a picture. And so you can have only one fast decay critical power and one solution for, them, for it. Let's see. This is the picture of all this that I said, like two orbits exiting with two different P's. Then they would cross at some point Q and the X dot Z dot in P2 would be over X dot Z dot in P1 at Q. And this is impossible because you always have the Z dot P2 less than Z dot P1. So in this case, you, you would have exactly the other figure and they could not cross this way. So basically studying the dynamical systems, you find this uh, absurd and then you go back to the Pucci operator and see that for only one P star and only one solution fast decaying at that time. So this is a, a very simple proof compared to other approaches that are in the literature, for example. And of course, this is a more general problem because it has a weight in front of the power P. Anyway, all pictures that I put here are proofs, let's say, based in the Poincaré Bendixson theorem, which says that an orbit that exists for all time is bounded if it exists for a time is bounded. It's so in a box in that uh, x, z uh, axis and it must go to a stationary point or to a periodic orbit. So in this kind of problems, it's very important to study periodic orbits. We were able to find a Dulux criterion for the Pucci's operator with weight and based on the existence or not, of periodic orbits, we are able to decide if the regular solution converges to uh, a stationary point or if it blows up in, in finite time. Just to finish, there is um, the P bigger than P star. It's when you see, start seeing the solutions which decay slowly and pseudo slowly. So, for example, in this picture, we see the solution coming. The regular solution is always pictured in red. The regular solution is the one that is coming out of N0, and it goes around, in this case, for example, around the periodic orbit. So you end up having uh, a solution which oscillates like the red one, which is called the pseudo slowing decaying solution. In all other singular and everything you get from the correspondence one-to-one -one with the dynamical system. So studying deeply the dynamical systems, you are able to see all the solutions in this setting for P bigger than P critical, for example. There are many open problems with respect to Pucci's operator. This is just the first, uh, uh, some first uh, ideas non-radial positive solutions for Pucci's operator, then you have to face the whole um, fully nonlinear operator, which is difficult. Few results exist by Kwas Sirakov and some others, um, Caffarelli Cabré and everything, but anyway, it's a problem that is being exploited uh, just uh, recently. 
sign changing radio pouches with weight. So we just found positive solutions, but there is a, a big um, world of sign changing that could be probably approached by a dynamical systems too. In the complete range of periodic orbits, we have some partial results on periodic orbits, but the complete range of periodic orbits is going to tell a lot on these uh, existence results and what type of solutions we are finding. So I thank you for your attention. And I stop here. So thank you. Thank you, Liliana, for the beautiful talk. Uh, now it's time for uh, questions or comments. Can I ask you? Sure. Go ahead, Olympio. Hi, Olympio. Hi, uh, Liliana. Very nice talk. Very beautiful work. Uh, I miss the uh, the number. This is the P P star. I don't know. Is a critical exponent. Yes, it's a critical exponent. If lambda is equal to lambda, if the Pucci is just a Laplace operator and you have a lambda equals to lambda, mm -hmm. then this is the critical exponent. So we are finding radio solutions over the critical exponent. Oh, very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Of course, they are radio. They are not completely, they are just mm -hmm. for RN or mm -hmm. okay. this domain. Beautiful, beautiful work. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, any any other uh, questions or comments? Can you see the, the chat, Lillian? Yes. Okay. La dinamica in, la, in cada punto, the dynamics in each point, a stationary point depends on the linearization of the autonomous system, of the system, yes. You linearize, and then you find that, for example, the, those lines where they cross are x dot equals to zero, z dot equals to zero. Therefore, they are stationary points where they cross. But then you have to linearize around each point in order to know if you have positive or negative eigenvalues to see if it's a settle point coming out. For example, n zero is where if there is a trajectory that comes out from N0, what you're going to see in the Pucci's operator is a solution which is regular, bounded, finite on radius R equals to zero. So you want to see an orbit that goes out of N0 because this is going to give you the best solution, the regular solution there. So to see how it goes out, it depends on the linearization around N0, yes. And it's always a settle point. So that's why you always have regular solutions. It can be solution in a ball or RN, but it depends on the linearization. I think there is another question in the chat. The method uh, to find the, the picture of the, the phase plane. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yes, you define these uh, two variables, x, t, z, t. And then the phase, or let's say the flow, is all identified in the x, z plane. You look at the flow, and each line of that flow, each trajectory, is a solution of the Pucci's, is a profile of the Pucci's. So you, you use it, the flow, as a, a picture of the set of solutions okay any any other question comments one more question it's do you have oh. time yeah yeah go ahead Olympia. Yeah. we have time liliani uh, to, to study the non-radio case uh, uh, this this method dynamic system is is applicable the, the papers I know by Boyan and Quas and others are mm -hmm. just uh, the PDEs and fully nonlinear equations. Oh, okay. It becomes a lot more tractable, the problem, and that's why Felmer and Quas were very um, 
let's say, fundamental in the beginning some years ago, because as you face just radio solutions, you become, mm -hmm. you, you have a problem in your hands, which is not fully nonlinear, so it's more tractable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> but Sidakov has results and it's all fully mm -hmm. nonlinear approach. Mm -hmm. So let's thank the speaker again. Thank you for the beautiful talk, Liliana. Thank you. Thank you, Liz.